Welcome back everyone, our third and final example for trig substitution using sine. We've got the integral of square root 4 minus x squared dx. We can probably see what's under the root, I think, as a squared minus u squared constant expression minus variable expression squared. So we will let u equal a sine of theta in this case. Uh, we should notice, I guess, that a is equal to 2, 2 squared is 4, and u is equal to x. So my actual substitution will be that x is equal to 2 sine of theta. And then we'll need to replace dx as well. So dx, the derivative would be 2 cosine theta d theta. Okay, if I rearrange this sine theta, would equal x over 2, and remember that sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse in a right triangle, so I go ahead and look at my right triangle and assign x to be the opposite side, and 2 to be the hypotenuse, and if I use Pythagorean theorem, this squared plus this squared would equal that squared, then I would get the square root of 4 minus x squared for this one. And we go ahead and replace everything and get a new integral in terms of theta and d theta. So we'll get the antiderivative of square root 4 minus x squared. So I square 2 sine theta, I get 4, and I get a sine squared theta. So there we have a multiple of a Pythagorean identity, which is what we wanted. And then dx, we get 2 cosine theta d theta. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bump my 2 out front. Um, also, if I just do this sort of one step at a time, I would factor out a 4 here to see an exact Pythagorean identity under the root. So we would have 4 times the quantity 1 minus sine squared theta. Um, I'd still have a cosine theta with my d theta outside of the root. So factoring out now the square root of... 4 would be a 2, so we have another 2 that comes out, so we get a 4 on the outside, and we get the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. This Pythagorean identity we will want to think of as cosine squared theta. I have a cosine squared theta in the root, I have a cosine theta outside, and then because we are in a right triangle and everything's in quadrant 1, I can think of this as just cosine theta. So I get cosine theta times cosine theta d theta, and of course we will think of that as the integral of cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, once we get here now, we say, how do I do this integral? And you have to rely on your trig knowledge. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit more. Um, and the answer is that we will need to use a double angle identity to do this. When we have an even power of cosine by itself, we will use a double angle. So I'm going to start over here. This is actually going to be 4 times the integral of 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2 d theta. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bump out the over 2 and just say 4 over 2 on the outside is 2, and then we'll have the antiderivative of 1 plus cosine of 2 theta d theta. And this integral is not so bad once we do that. I'll remember that I have a 2 out here. Um, the antiderivative of 1 d theta is just theta. And then the antiderivative of cosine 2 theta uh, would be sine 2 theta, but the reciprocal of 2 will come out because we're doing the antiderivative, so we'll get 1 half sine 2 theta plus c. Uh, I'll go ahead and distribute my 2, I suppose. So I have 2 theta uh, plus, that just gives me a sine 2 theta plus c. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, I need to know what theta is, and then I can replace that. So if I look in here, 2 times theta. Theta would be, from my original substitution of sine theta equals x over 2, that would tell me that theta is actually the inverse sine of x over 2. So this one here will be the inverse sine 
of x over 2. And for this next one, if I think about this angle here, um, 2 theta is not really, I guess, in there. We could go ahead and replace in there, but then you have sine of 2 times the inverse sine of. That may look a little bit gross. So what we might want to do is actually think of this as an identity and get rid of the 2 theta, because in the triangle I have theta, right? I don't have 2 theta. So it might be nicer to think of sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cosine theta, if we're unsure of what to do here. Okay, so that is going to be 2 times sine theta. We know what sine theta is. It was x over 2, right? And then cosine theta, if we're not sure, we can always look at the triangle and see what cosine theta is, right? Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that will give me this square root here over the hypotenuse of 2. And then if I reduce one of the 2's on the bottom with the 2 out front, right, that would give me x times this root all over 2, right? So we go ahead and put that in there. Let's replace everything and say what we have. So here I have 2 times the inverse sine of x over 2 plus x times my root 4 minus x squared over 2, all of that plus c. Okay, that's our answer and our last example for trig substitution with sine. We have additional examples with tangent and secant substitutions. Check those out. We'll see you in the next video.